Okay, so in the previous example, we thought about a biologist that was um, collecting samples of um, cubs, black bear cubs. Um, so now we're all taking statistics. So let's imagine here, we're going to take our talents on the road um, to a casino. And so let's say a, strate a strategic gambler um, thinks that they have identified a slot machine which um, pays out more than, say, it should. So it pays out more money than the other slot machines. Um, so how can they come up with a way of gauging whether that is so? So they um, watch this machine seven, for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So for one week, they have 24 hours sur surveillance on this machine, and they observe that this machine paid out $10 million jackpots over that week. Um, so how can they figure out whether the machine is faulty or whether this is within reason? Well, we would need to know what the underlying distribution is for the amount of times a slot machine pays out this grand prize. So step one in this process would be, well, let's um, go ahead and collect some data. Okay, so they stake out four other slot machines in the casino. They Each person watches a slot machine, and over the course of the week, um, slot machine one only paid out one jackpot. Slot machine two paid out three jackpots. Um, excuse me, slot machine two paid out three jackpots. S slot machine three had four jackpots, and slot machine four had a total of eight jackpots. So does this... Um, slot machine that we observed that paid out 10 jackpots, does, does that seem about right? Um, okay, so we've got our data, and now what we'd want to consider is based on this data, what distribution is most likely to describe it. So we need to think about, well, what model would fit this data? Um, in the previous one, we were looking at a continuous random variable. How much does a, does a cub weigh? That's a continuous random variable. Here, we're counting how many times did the slot machine pay out a jackpot in the course of a week. So this is a discrete random variable because we're counting things. And so let's think about the different discrete random variables that we've looked at, um, binomial distributions were probably the ones that we've seen most frequently. And so why wouldn't a binomial distribution work for this example? Um, binomial distributions work when we have a, a fixed number of trials. Um, and with this example, we're, we don't have a fixed number of trials. What we have is a fixed time period, one week, and what we're trying to observe is how many successes, how frequently did we observe this occurrence of paying out a jackpot over that fixed week. Um, so if you think back to the discrete random variables that we looked at, um, you might want to think to yourself, which one has the best chance of matching this data set? And that would be um, Poisson seems like a good match. Uh, and so if you remember, Poisson distributions... Um, just to informally sketch this out, they tend to look like this. So they, they get, as you move to the right, the bars get smaller. And so what a Poisson distribution is used is um, if we know how, on average, how many times an event occurs in a fixed time period, then a Poisson distribution is useful. And so we denote um, lambda as the um, mean or the average number of occurrences in a fixed time period. And so it makes sense that this kind of bops down, down, and down. It may be that our slot machines would follow this distribution because in order to pay out, um, you know, a slot machine first pays out one, and then it's going to pay out two jackpots and three jackpots. So as the number of jackpots X goes up, it's going to get less and less likely that that slot machine paid out um, larger values of x. So the smaller that x is, the, the more likely um, that is to occur. So uh, a Poisson distribution might work here, and Poisson distribution that has one parameter, which is lambda, which is the mean number of outcomes. And that um, PDF for a Poisson distribution would look like... Um, 
the PDF here is lambda to the x times e to the minus lambda all divided by x factorial. So that's the PDF for a Poisson distribution um, where lambda again is the only parameter in this model and lambda is representing in this case on average how many times does a slot machine pay out the jackpot in the course of a week and we don't know what lambda is. So that would be the next step in the process would be well, given that we've observed four values, one, three, four, and eight, if we assume that uh, the underlying distribution is Poisson, well, how can we figure out the value of lambda, which would be most likely given that we observed this data set? Okay, well, to determine that, let's first kind of consider what is the probability, first of all, of even getting this data set. So what's the probability? that um, x1 would equal 1 and x2 would equal, um, we got 3, and x3 is equal to 4, and x4 is equal to 8. Well, since these are independent events, this would be the same thing as saying what's the probability that x1 is 1 times the probability that x2 is 3 times the probability that uh, x3 is 4, times the probability that x4 is 8. Um, so we, again, assumed that each of these machines, each of these uh, um, ob observations was independent of the other. So we could just multiply each of those values. So how would I find the probability that x1 is equal to 1? Well, that's going to be what I get when I plug 1 into the PDF function. So this function over here is telling us what's the probability that x is equal to x. That random variable x is equal to x. Um, so for this one, I would say, well, what's the probability that x is equal to 1? That's going to be lambda to the first power e to the minus lambda all over 1 factorial. Then I'm going to say lambda. The second observation I got was 3. So I'm going to get the probability that occurs would be lambda cubed e to the minus lambda all over 3 factorial and so on. And then we would say uh, lambda to the fourth since our third observation was that x was equal to 4. over 4 factorial, and then um, our last observation, our fourth observation was 8. We observed, say, 8 jackpots over the course of the week. Okay, and so what we have here um, below is we have a formula for what is the probability of observing a sample that had x1 equal to 1, so on, x4 equal to 8. Um, it, and we don't know what lambda is over here. So kind of the what we are given is the sample and what we don't know is the value of lambda. And so as we saw with the previous normal distribution um, example, what I would want to do is then ask myself, well, um, which value of lambda is most likely to be true if this is our output? So let's kind of see how we can take this probability and answer the question, Given this set of data, which value of lambda is most likely?